know that there's never a dull moment when Representative Alan Grayson is in front of a microphone, and that is the case when he sat down with News 13's Beth Bruce Wall to talk about, among other things, minimum wage and immigration. You bet? Representative Alan Grayson joining us here in studio. We've got four topics in four minutes. Lightning round, here we go. Workers' rights, you recently held a town hall meeting in Central Florida, and you were talking about wanting to increase minimum wage to 1050, and you say that you're going to fight for the rights to get workers paid vacation leave. How are you going about this? Well, it's, it's very simple. We need to pay people more because the, they need more to survive. If we don't pay people an adequate minimum wage, then the taxpayers end up paying for their health care, end up paying for their housing, end up paying their taxes instead of them paying their own taxes. It, it's something that we need to do for everyone's benefit, not just the workers. How do you do that? I mean, are you going to drive business out of business? No, listen, in Australia, they have a lower unemployment rate than the United States does, and $16 an hour minimum wage. Oh. $16 an hour. There are a dozen other major countries that have a higher minimum wage than the United States does. I want us to be number one in everything, including okay. how we treat our workers. Next, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. This thing kicks in. I went to the website for um, the health uh, department. Begins October 1st of this year to begin coverage of 2014. Senator Marco Rubio is saying he wants to defund this thing. Your thoughts? I think that's horrible. Listen, the main thing is we have to make sure that the 50 million people in this country who don't have private health insurance right now get the care they need to stay healthy and to stay alive, and that it's affordable for everybody. We're making major advancements in that regard. People are getting the care that they need more and more. Now we have children being covered under their parents' policies up to the age of 26. You can't be denied care or coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. We're making progress. Let's continue to make okay. progress, not take five steps back. If this was a game, I'd have to do one of these, like time out. <laughs> Why do you think then Republicans are saying this is going to drive businesses out of business? Why do you think it's doing ridiculous? This? But why? The Affordable Care Act actually subsidizes health insurance for, for small businesses to provide health care. Every small business gets a one third tax credit in providing health care that they need to provide to their own employees. Okay. It's absurd. We're going to get abbreviated answers here. Immigration, the looming budget fight, okay, I think could possibly, um, you know, push immigration reform to the side, will it, do you think? I think that would be a shame. But what really pushes immigration to the side is the fact that many people in the Republican Party don't want to do anything that would help brown people. There's an underlying insinuation of racism in, in the way that Washington, D.C. Republicans really look at this way. issue. I do. I what, do. What do you say when they turn Virtually around? All the 11 million, the virtually all of the 11 million people who are undocumented, the great majority of them are Hispanics. You think it's a coincidence? Okay, well, you never mince words. <laughs> uh, and lastly, very quickly, Doma, the ruling government, uh, do you think the government is scrambling right now for the Defense of Marriage Act? Because they're really having to adjust some of their paperwork. The president has said, I want this done swiftly and quickly. Can the government adjust to the ruling from the Supreme Court? Yes, listen, we can't judge people on the basis of who they love. We can't do that. That's wrong. But the can, is the government Court, ready to follow the instructions given the, by the president? The government has to be ready. And the Supreme Court. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Representative Alan Grayson, District 9.